What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Now, I'm gonna do a, a different video this time. Um, if you don't know, my name's Ragin, but I go by uh, Monkey RC. That's kind of my page and what I um, use for my social media and stuff like that. Um, I, uh, I was really into RC when I was younger, and when I got older, you know, just life happens, kids happen, different responsibilities. But uh, this year, I've I've definitely gotten back into it a lot. Um, some pretty awesome builds. Uh, definitely a learning curve getting back into it. You know, um, back when I was first getting into it, I couldn't. I it was overwhelming the whole lipo situation, li lipo batteries and different types, how to charge them, all that stuff. Um, so it's definitely been a journey relearning all of that and acquiring everything that I've acquired in order to uh, really enjoy this hobby. Um, I, uh, I figured this time around I would kind of just walk you through my stable, everything I have um, so far, and kind of tell you what I've done to them. And, uh, so it's going to be a little longer video, but uh, if, you're in, if you're interested in seeing what I have, and uh, I would be more than happy to show. So to, uh, to kick it off, I think I'm going to go with um, some of my uh, brushless I don't know if they're technically like Chinese brand, but they're quick. <laughs> they're quick. They're fun. Super fun. Um, you don't need to spend an arm and a leg to have really dependable, awesome RC cars. And that's something I've learned. That's something that I have, uh, I've had to uh, figure out on my own because I was always under the impression like there's toys and then there's hobby grade. And really, what it boils down to is hot grade, I guess, is what you consider stuff you can replace parts on and or have available aftermarket parts and replacement parts and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'll walk you through a couple of the I have and why I bought them. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's get right into it, all right? So I'm going to turn the camera. You're probably going to get motion sickness here. But I'm just going to turn it right down here towards the bench, okay? Let's see here. Yep, I think that'll work. All right, so first up, I have my Bezgar. And to the best of my ability, I will try to tell you uh, what these are. Um, so this is the HM124. Okay, so it's a 12th scale. And this thing is freaking awesome. I've actually recommended this to a couple other of my buddies who are getting into it. Um, it is completely brushless. It is dirty. <laughs> we just got back from a camping trip in southern Utah, so there'll be some video of some of the crawlers. Look, oh, yeah, just bringing home some uh, shrapnel from the... But, uh, yeah, so it's completely brushless. Let me turn this up just a little bit. There we go. All right, there you go. Um, it comes with three batteries, two, two of those USB chargers, two bodies... The other one is blue and white. Um, I kind of already messed that one up, and they were awesome enough to uh, throw a second body in. Um, extra clips, some extra parts. I won't get into details about it. Oil-filled shocks, which, you know, are, is just great right there. Love, 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 love this thing. This thing is insane. It rips, and this thing is bulletproof. Like, if I could recommend, if you're thinking about getting back into this and you want something fun that you can just rip around either the neighborhood and the, uh, or on the campsite or just out and about anywhere, keeping your car or your truck, this thing is insane. All right. Um, I haven't done really anything to it. This is completely stock. I've gone through and just checked the oil and the shocks just to make sure it was topped off. And, uh, um, I did add some felt right here because I noticed with my previous body it was getting uh, banged up right there in between the shock towers so that's pretty much all I've done to this but if you're interested in a super fast car low maintenance ready to go decent uh, controllable throttle on the remote it is a cheaper remote but you know it it's it works great uh, my buddy down in southern Utah was letting his uh, niece play with his and she was just loving it but 
yeah, bulletproof. Love it. Also, I really love how tough the compound is in these tires. It doesn't get eaten up on the road so easy. So there's the Bezgar HM124. All right. My next one is newer, but I am, so I really don't have a lot to say about it yet, but it's a HyperGo. And this model is, let me look at the box. It is, let's see here. Mm hmm. HyperGo 116th um, high speed off road truck. Oh, look, there we go. It's the H16BM. All right. Now, this thing is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bigger, but it is. Pretty small, but let me tell you something. Don't let the size fool you. This thing is insanity. I uh, took it out just in the front yard and ran a battery through it, and wow. Okay, so first thing I'd like to say is fans, thank you. That's amazing. Again, this thing is bulletproof. These Chinese cars, man, they're meant to to take a beating. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna go out on a limb and assume that uh, HyperGo or Bezgar or any of these people are just made in China, but are Chinese companies or anything like that, but they're definitely on the cheaper side. So they're not uh, necessarily gonna be in your hobby stores and stuff like that, wanting an arm and a leg for it. Uh, it comes with two batteries. It's really interesting. The battery on this one's really interesting because it's not like a standard battery. It's a completely enclosed battery that you have to put in here. Still very, very cool. This thing is crazy fun too. And from all the thrashing I've seen on, on these online, they can take a beating pretty good. So pretty happy with that. He is newer, so I haven't taken him out too much. In fact, I just put the wheelie bar on it. So he's a, uh, that came in the box. I forgot about that part, but kind of scraped up the rear end without it. But that's what they're for, man. They're meant to have fun. And, and the thing I can tell you about the fast ones is nothing breaks your heart more than when you have a very expensive brushless fast car hit something, break into two pieces, and and you have to put those pieces back to Okay, I'll just skip that part. I got one clip in. But this right here, it's about, I think it's about 150 bucks right now on Amazon. Sweet, sweet thing. Pretty bright light too. I like that a lot. So yeah, there's my HyperGo. Now, as far as HyperGo goes, I have really liked the look of, uh, of Arma's infraction. So HyperGo came out with a drift truck. Now it is one, I want to say it's one sixteenth, but don't quote me on that. Let's see what the box is. It is one fourteenth and it is, let me get the model number. Hold on. Yep. Mm-hmm. H14MK. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This thing is insane. Out of all my newer ones, this one has probably surprised me the most with how much fun it is, but it does have its limitations. They're gonna market it as being like, you can take it off road and everything. And I can tell you, I can tell you, metal skid, awesome, very close to the ground. Okay, so any rock, I mean, these are just little pebbles in the road. They're gonna take gashes out of your skid plate pretty good. But if you put on the uh, plastic wheels for it to drift, wow. And that's the main thing. This is a drift, this is a drift, uh, oh, I'm playing with an earlier, I forgot to undo it. But this is a drift car. Now, what that means is right here, there's a gyro in it. So as it, the car is turning, these are correcting itself. So I'm not really technical with the drift cars. This is my first one. 
So there are plenty of other people out there who know better than I do. But uh, yeah, this is hands down a really, really sweet, fun car, man. Uh, comes with two batteries, uh, double fan, one over the motor and the motor heat sink, and then one over the ESC. Brushless. I mean, you can't go wrong with this thing. It also comes with uh, two extra sets of tires. Um, one of them is like a hard, hard rubber. Uh, the other one's a softer rubber. They're both off-road, knobby style. I don't really know the real difference between the two. What you'd want, maybe the, the harder rubber is, I guess, if you still wanted to be on road with, uh, with rubber and you didn't want to drift with these plastic tires that come with it. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I posted a video of me kind of just roughly, uh, drifting around in my upstairs hardwood floor, but I need to find a better, like a big open space I can do. I mean, look at that though. Now, a little tip I will tell you guys, because it's marketed a lot with most RC cars, is the LEDs. And this one right here, if you watch, if you watch online, it's got like red and red and blue lights kind of almost like flashing like police lights and it's got a you know bar up here and and all all these leds but you know just to keep in mind on oh, the headlights and stuff but just to keep in mind the more leds it has the more draw it has on the battery so personally for me who's not really running it at night who's not really doing these crazy fancy things i always end up just disconnecting my leds I mean, I don't really need them, and it's never really bothered me to not have them. Maybe some of the wow factor, I guess, but... So what I always end up doing is I just take a piece of tape, painter's tape or whatever, and take unclip, unclip the LED hookup and just kind of keep it up there. I mean, and you don't clip it or anything like... You don't take it out permanently, you just keep it out of the way. So if there ever is a time you want to show off and you want to see the LEDs, it's still uh, tucked up in there. So yeah, there's that. Hypergo. H, what did I say it was? It was the H14MK. Really sweet setup. Okay. That's three down. Next one. Now this one, I've seen a lot of videos about, and I was really excited to get my hands on one. Check this thing out. Again, this one was ran down south. I brought it down with me, so it's Got a little bit of stuff in there. I blew them. I, I blew it out, but uh, looks like there's still some crap in there. Okay, so this is WL Toys. Um, let me get them. I'm super unprepared for this video. I wanted to show you, then I forgot. I'm like, oh yeah, you guys might want to know the model numbers. Let me go. Um, all right. It is the WL Toys 124017. Okay, this is the version two. There's a first. There's a v version one, which had had a lot of problems with it. So this is the version two. Okay, so if you are gonna buy this, make sure you look for V2. Okay, and it looks like it is made in China. So right there, I don't know if you can see, but it'll say V2. Okay. So anyways. This thing is crazy fast, okay? Um, it has fan over the ES ESC, heat sink over there. This, I haven't clocked it yet. I know a lot of people have the GPS things to, get, to clock the speed, but from what I've seen, they just look like they hauled ass. So I was like, yeah, I want one. And let me tell you, it's almost uncontrollable how fast it is. Thankfully, you can turn the speed down on the on the controller but again oil fill shocks aluminum shock towers which is awesome full metal skid plate i mean that's what i'm saying with some of these some of these uh, cheaper cars that may not be brand they um they really give you your money's worth i have to say like i am really impressed i mean and that's just a sweet buggy i think it's ribs i love it all right, so I think that's it for my uh, uh, cheaper cheaper cars. If you're interested in uh, these WL Toys, HyperGo, 
a lot of these other Amazon sold brands and stuff, they, they have some really great options. But as far as all my research has shown, the I bought the most solid ones that had a really good reviews and really good videos. And, and, and I can also tell you, if you want to have any more questions about any of them, you can more than welcome comment and I'll, I'll answer them as best I can. But yeah, this is amazing. Like that. Love it. Yeah, this thing rips. Okay. So, I guess, let's see here. I'll go through my fast ones first, because that kind of seems to be where we're going. Um, right now, this is currently a project of mine. But this is my Arma Sentin 3S BLX. And this is the body it came with. Um, wow, look at that. I might have to... I might have to zoom out. Um, maybe not. This thing is insanity. Okay, so now we're starting to talk about some real money for some of these. This is, uh, I think they say 110 scale, the Typhon, which I also have. I won't get to that one. It's considered 8 scale. They're pretty much the same platform, though. So I would say maybe 8 scale. Um, there's a video I did of the Friday Send It where uh, I was literally launching it. 15 20 feet in the air and this thing just took a beating it's insane but i definitely paid for it with body damage so currently i have a new body that i'm going to start working on to get it um ready for this thing because this one has definitely seen seen its day i personally like my stuff as clean as possible i know it's impossible to keep it perfect but i try as hard as i can now it's currently not crazy put together right now because I am working on things. With these fast armas, the one thing I recommend everybody do is get this little fine mesh bag over the cockpit where everything sits. It will save you so much headache cleaning these things and damage because I can tell you this, I took this thing out the first time, wrecked a fan in sand, Sand got in the fan, wrecked it. Um, the other one was getting debris in it, and you could just hear it just, just catching debris. And also, if you if you own one of these or any kind of any kind of short course trucks or anything like that, you know that it will fill up with rocks and crap in here. You can literally turn this thing upside down and shake it, and all this crap comes out. This keeps that from happening. Okay, super easy to install. And it just unzips down the side on both sides with some hooks. I'm just being silly right now. Okay, so things I've done to this one so far is I upgraded the fans. These are two Amazon fans, but they're a lot stronger. Um, I really, really like these. I think, let's see what this is. Air. A R R A R O W N, Aurorown, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, if you have this, if you have the scent, and I can tell you that the guard over the ESC will not fit it, so I had to zip tie it to the top or underneath the ESC to put it on there, and then I used a little bit of my own mesh as a guard. Uh, the guard over the one over the motor fits it just fine, and it goes right in. But the ESC was the first one I broke from sand getting into it. The other thing I'm working on right now is I am putting Proline shocks on it. I just barely, let me show you, just barely got the front shocks in. So these will be going on the front. So I'll have these nice Prolines. Don't get me wrong, the stock ones are great. They do just fine, but I wanted a little bit more improvement. So, and they, they are pretty pricey, so just keep that in mind. But this, I think it was like 12 bucks. Um, you can't go wrong. This is the best investment you can do. Um, I also have some like hybrid tires on right now just because the stock tires get eaten alive on the street. You, as you will know, and as you do research, it's a never ending debate on who has the best tires for these things that don't get shredded. Honestly, 35 bucks for a set on Amazon, it'll get you through. I'm not too crazy on these things, but it's a sweet, sweet rig. I absolutely love this thing. Do 
hands down, Arma does an amazing job. Like, shocking how fast and fun these are. All right, so there's the Sentin. And now for his new brother, I just got, and I've only ran it once down, and it was when we were just down south, the Typhon. Look at that. Typhon 3S BLX. It's pretty much the same setup as the Sentin. A little different, the way the shocks are, the way it's built, but for the most part it is, um, I mean, it's new, new. Like so much of the body clips kind of stiff still. Look at that. That is sick. So to kind of give you an idea, so this is the same fan, ESC fan, that was on the Sentin that I ended up blowing up. And this guard right here does not fit a new aftermarket fan, so I had to remove that. But to get ahead of myself and to practice what I preach, here's my bag for it. They make them for this one too. Do it. Trust me. Huge headache saver. Now on all these, I run a Z5200 milliamp. That's just Z. Amazon, great battery. 3S, love it. Get about 25, 30 minutes on a battery, depending on how hard you're on it. I'm not gonna go too much into this one because I just barely got it. But if it's anything like the Sentin, it's gonna be insane. I did order some road tires for it. Again, I've learned a lot of lessons from this owning the Sentins. And if you take stock tires out on the road, well, a couple batteries through them, they're pretty much rubbed down to nothing. So, yeah, look at that. I'm so excited. I might even buy some paddles for this. I've seen some paddle videos with some of these and they are insane. So, there's that. Now it is time for my, whoop, sorry. Now it is time for my bread and butter, which is crawlers. Now, all those fast ones I just showed you, they are great. They are tons of fun. Great to have around the campsite. Great to take out onto the course. There's a track out here by the dump, which is amazing. And if you're from Utah and Salt Lake Valley, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, it's just west of the dump. Um, and uh, it's a pretty cool track. Whoever uh, put that together is awesome. There's also a... Uh, RC plane uh, runway there too. Um, okay, so my crawlers are kind of my bread and butter. They are, I put a lot of time and effort and money um, into building these. So almost all my cars are pretty built. Some are unrecognizable from stock, but uh, yeah, I'll get into it. If you want to ask me a bunch of questions about the crawlers, message me personally. I can try to give you as much info as I can. Um, I'll try to be quick. It would take too long for me to explain all the upgrades, so I'll just I'll I'm already at 23 minutes on this video. So, yeah, let's uh let's get right to it. All right. So we'll go small to big. So first on the list is my uh, Axial SCX24. This is uh this was the first my first micro, and. I, I enjoyed this. I couldn't put it down. The second I got it, I was obsessed with it. In fact, when I first got it, I was kind of like, eh, this thing's kind of dinky, but you know what? Don't let me, don't let that fool you. This thing is crazy fun. Okay. So, underneath the hood, it is very modded out. I won't get, like I said, I won't go too crazy into it, but pretty much as much under the sun you can do to it other than going brushless has been done to it. Um, there is an ESC relocation move the battery up here, blah, blah. I mean, I'm gonna get more into it, but if you want an individual video of my builds, just ask and I can like do a comprehensive video of it. So there's that one. That one has a, uh, this thing is pretty crazy. The amount of flex I have on this. I mean, oh yeah, love it, love it. Okay, the next one is gonna be pretty unrecognizable, or at least maybe recognizable because I'm posting a lot about it. But here is my TRX 4M. And his name is Fury. And 
I name all my cars. The red one was a little red. I forgot to mention the other names if you're <laughs> interested, but this is Fury. Now, again, this is going to be nothing about this thing is stock, maybe other than the ESC and the transmission housing. All the gears are F. I mean, everything else. And I actually run this with dual batteries in the cab. So I got one and two. So when one runs out, it's easy to switch. But this is a Muse Ripper chassis, the new one. It's the nylon one, not the 3D printed one. And I went with a Toyota style grill because I am a Toyota nut. So that's what I went with rather than the Jeep. But I also have extremely heavy Muse portal axles on it. Um, yeah, this this is a build. This has been over a year of building on this one, and I'm very happy with it. Very, very happy with it. Again, I'll do an individual video about it maybe later. But yeah, there's that. Next on the list, oh, so we have Todd. I name him Todd because Orange Fox. And here's the most famous orange fox, Todd from Fox and Hound, one of my uh, daughter's favorite movies to watch. So, this right here is a crazy fun rig. This is kind of like my comp rig, comp rig, if you will. I like to take it out on, uh, for meets and everything like that. This is an amazing, and if you can believe it, this thing weighs insane. I mean, thump. it's like Jurassic Park. <laughs> but a few unique things about this that maybe you can't just buy parts for is I took the stock links off the TRX4M, the plastic ones, and I actually used them and heated it up and bent them, the long rears, on for my hood protection sliders. And then right here on the top, I use the short links as, as roof protectors because I personally, I know, I know it's kind of uh, against the ways of, of crawling and getting your stuff dirty, but I am not crazy about having a super scratched up rig. I, it bugs me. I have to refinish the, sh I have to refinish the body or do because I, I like, I spend a lot of time and money on these. I want to enjoy the look of them. Now, um, to protect back here, I just got some electrical tape wrapped up. I might take that off. I'm not crazy about the look of it. It looks a little chintzy. And then right here along the side, um, this is the stock link that came with this. That's metal, but I didn't like the look of the silver across here from the, uh, from the metal, so I put some heat shrink on it. And that just keeps the side for, from getting all banged and bashed up. Um... Pro comp, uh, pro line tires. Sorry, um, 1.5s trio wheels. I mean, I could go into all the stuff. This thing is literally built from the ground up from the stock, so it's an incredible, incredible rig. Super capable. Again, I rip my LEDs out. I just feel like they're an unnecessary drain on the battery. That's my personal opinion. And I also on these Capras. By the way, this is a UTB-18. Sorry, I forgot to mention. UTB-18 um, is the 18th scale Capra. I also remove the cockpit people in here, and I use a rubber mesh in there. I feel like it keeps everything, like the motor and the ESC, cooler, and I just like to look more. I'm not crazy about the people in the cockpit. I'm not a scale, scale nut by any means. I want it to perform rather than just look. So, yeah. Solid brass, man. I could go into, I could talk about this thing for an hour, but yeah, this is Todd, my UTB 18. Now, this next one is kind of in pieces right now, so. So, who is uh, Todd's biggest adversary in Fox and the Hound? Chief. So, this is my full size, one tenth scale. Capra four-way steer. It's in pieces right now because I'm working on some wheels. I'm building the wheels right now. I might also redo these shocks. I think they need to, I think they leaked a little, so I need to redo them and some other things to it. But 
this is kind of the the rig that got me really back into RC. Seeing videos of this from like West Desert Crawler and and some of these other amazing things of what this can do was it it just blew my mind. So I had to have one. Um, this one stock came with red red and black plastics. I've uh, gone and refinished them because they started getting scratched, and I and I might I might still take these off and make some metal ones because yeah, personal preference, right? Personal preference. Um, again, there is too much to name on this to take up in one video, but it is pretty pretty built out as well. Um, I'm I love this thing. Chief is Chief has been a standard in most of my my uh, outdoor adventures with my friends. In fact, I got my my good buddy Mark to buy a Capra. He owns one, um, and same thing four way steer, and they're just so much fun. Super insane what these things can do. All right. Now, I think that just leaves my uh, newest crawler left. Now, here is the body that came with it. This blue, it's a pretty blue, don't get me wrong, it grew on me, but as you can see by a lot of my rigs I build, I just like the look of white and black. So, I just finished the body on it. Here it is. Fix that a little. There we go. This is the, my SCX-10 base camp. With a new body, I know, I know, I messed up the sticker right here for the window. Trust me, I've already beat myself up about it. I'll address that. but. This right here has been a new addition to my stable, and I gotta say, this was so much fun down south. Oh my gosh, my uh, my good buddy Derek, um, family friend and just good friend, he uh, he bought one just before we went down too, and so we were both rocking them. His is green, and wow, holy crap, knocked it out of the park with this one. I love this rig. Um, if you've seen some of my previous issues, uh, videos of it, um, I had some issues with the front bumper and the rear bumper catching, so I did remove those. And then also I trimmed a lot of the plastic. On this new body, I did the same thing. If I can see a little piece right there. Um, in order for it not to rub. Okay. So far, I haven't done much to it. But what I have done is I went with an 11 tooth pinion so that it's not so crazy fast. Uh, stock motor though. Um, I have put brass hex um, uh, extenders. I think I went with eight mil. And then I've got some deep dish Injura bead locks right there. I don't know if you can see them. So they're deep dish. And then I got some Proline Hyrax G8 compound tires on those. Um, and yeah, this is a this is where it sits so far right now. There is a there is a couple more upgrades I'm waiting to do to it. Um, some hobby wing stuff and a new motor. I think I'm gonna keep it brushed. Maybe I don't know, man. We'll see. Brush motors are cheap. You blow a motor, it's like twenty bucks. Get yourself a nice motor. And the motor I might put in here is the same brush motor I put in my Capra, which I'll, it's insane. Love it. Um, yeah, I uh, I will say this, though. I had to rebuild the shocks already, so that was kind of disappointing. They leaked a lot out the box. And I noticed that the ESC, personally with mine, my uh, Derek didn't have issues with him, but I noticed that the wire, if it was jostling around a little bit, it sometimes cut out. So Axial, if you're watching this, Maybe look into that. Other than that, I think the drag brake is great on it. I think everything about this is fantastic, but that is one issue that I personally ran into. I also removed the larger battery tray here in the rear. I put the spare body clip that it comes with on the screw, and then I also just threw the wrench and zip tied it to the back frame right here because you never know, in a pinch, you might need it. Um, yeah, it's, it is fantastic setup. 
I really like this a lot. I put the D-rings from the bumpers onto the frame, and uh, yeah, it just looks. Also, I put a little carbon fiber vinyl right there, because as you're trying to put these things on, they tend to want to rub. And then there's carbon fiber vinyl as the bed. But yeah. Oh, I also, uh, if you see my other videos, I also removed the restrictors off the shocks, so it has a lot more flex. Ugh, don't look at my window. It's so horrible. But... Yeah, so that's my stable right now as it is. I sit at 11 cars. Um, those all keep me pretty busy, so I don't know if I'm going to add more to it. Um, maybe if something crazy comes along, maybe I'll just trade for it. We'll see. But uh, this has really been an awesome journey, and I appreciate you guys uh, watching this video. It was crazy long, but um, I really appreciate it. So if you guys have any questions about my rigs or anything that I'm doing, just let me know. Like and subscribe, and uh, and I'll uh, post some videos from down in the, a video down in Vernal with the uh, SCX-10 base camp and what we did down there. All right. All right, man. Well, you guys have a good one. Monkey RC, I'm out.